Etwal, Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of India's biggest hotel company, that's Indian Hotels, joins us now. And he's joining us to discuss his numbers. Numbers which came on 31st were absolutely bumper, super and duper. Record profit, record margins, record occupancy, record profitability. And the stock is also almost at a record high. You've broken all records for the quarter gone by Mr. Chatwal. Now what do you want to break? <laughs> I think you are the expert you can guide. Our job is to just, we promise and we deliver. So whatever we have promised, whatever we have guided under the strategy Avant 2025, we are on track and uh, we are racing towards it. By a quarter of extraordinary one-time gain. Uh, there were weddings, there was a jam-packed holiday season, uh, there was G20. So what you've achieved in Q3, which was supposed to be a good quarter, how much of that uptick will sustain going forward? Because from the peak season now, there would be a slowdown because of cyclicality. See, Nikunj, um, I think it would be fair to say that Q3 has always historically been the best quarter for the sector. <clears throat> Given our strong growth momentum, um, we tend to e or we have performed even better than you know, or outperformed our previous Q3. Now Q4 is looking equally strong when compared to the Q4 in, in the past. Let's say if we go back 10 years with the month of January, which we have just closed yesterday, uh, the trend is continuing and um, we do expect um, uh, maybe the fourth record quarter in a year because the Q1, Q2, Q3 were all um, the best ever uh, quarters that the company has delivered in its 120 year history. Or be the best Q4 ever because when we are speaking to you, one month of business is already in the bag and I'm sure your visibility for uh, rest to rest uh, next two months also. Absolutely, the business on the books is fairly strong. The pickup is very strong. And actually, we hope to uh, benefit also from improving situation in New York, in Cape Town, uh, and London. So I think that should help us in going forward in Q1 and Q2 of the next financial year. And as we speak today, between today and the next financial year end, we would have opened another 20 hotels. So our not like for like growth is very strong and a couple of our important assets which were under renovation with the inventory out of order especially the Taj Mahal hotel popularly known as Taj Man Singh uh, should be 100% in operations uh, in the next three to four months with all the room inventory back uh, and some conference rooms only uh, being uh, in renovation let's say till the middle of June. Um, I think that and uh, Gwalior, Ushakiran Palace, which has also been shut down for absolute complete makeover opening in April, uh, and a lot of other initiatives, I think we are in a, in a very good space, coupled with the macro demand, the government's initiative on the GDP growth, government's initiative on the infrastructure uh, stimulus, uh, also the G20 and the World Cup cricket. I think the the sector is on the cusp of an upswing cycle. Mm. Good to hear that. Mr. Chetwal, uh, I must tell you that yesterday, uh, even though the markets did not hold on to the gains, yours was the one shining bright star. And I think the stock closed in, what, almost 7, 8 odd percent higher? Yeah, it did. Okay. Uh, but, you know, that aside, I wanted to know, what is the visibility going forward? Given the kind of momentum and demand that you foresee, what's the plan forward for new hotels? And what kind of new signings are you looking at? See, Aisha, firstly, getting lucky on one day is not definitely our strategic, <laughs> strategic imperative. I hope we are able to consistently deliver on our promise, consistently deliver on our performance on all metrics, as Nikun said at the outset of this uh, interaction. Uh, what we have guided on, we'll continue to do that. We will achieve our 300 rooms portfolio by end of 2025. 
we will have a balanced portfolio, which means 50%, which gives us the operating leverage in an up cycle, which is owned or leased, and a 50% portfolio driven through our new businesses and on management fee income. Uh, we will also continue to keep debt to zero level. That is what we have communicated at a corporate uh, perspective. And our growth of Taj will exceed 100 hotels. We stand at 96 today as we speak, uh, of which 75 are in operation, 21 in the pipeline. Uh, Ginger would cross definitely 100 hotels. We have guided 125 by end of 2025. And I think all our brands are very well positioned to grow. And as we cater to all segments of the market, from a ginger to a Vivanta to selections to Taj, the palaces, the safaris, I think uh, given the strength of domestic demand and our vast footprint uh, spread across 125 plus locations without including our homestay business of Ama, I think uh, we are well positioned to cater to the needs of all kinds of travelers from a tier three, tier two, tier one, that is two, our famous metros, which contribute the maximum to our top line and profitability. I wasn't talking about just yesterday, uh, even on a month to date basis or on a 52 week basis, Indian hotels has been a very, very rewarding start. Okay, but that aside, uh, Puneet, you know, as I see from your earnings, US, UK, Maldives, Dubai, your rev par for international hotels clearly has upped. But have US and UK in particular reached to levels in terms of occupancies that they were sitting at pre-COVID? Not yet. And that is what I tried to say that uh, also Cape Town, because all these three markets uh, are for us owned. So they, they we take the full revenue of those. They are not management contracts. Uh, we own the assets, although we have a management fee income coming from London uh, into the, uh, you know, that is a bit complicated from an accounting point of view. But we have the entire PL of New York, San Francisco, London, and Cape Town. And that is why I believe the best is yet to come uh, because those are significant revenue generators for us. Hi, um, you know, just going by your occupancy as well, now the business segment has seen a very strong improvement this time around, but leisure, palaces, and ginger, still low compared to Q3 of FY20, I'm talking about. When can we see a pickup across these three um, areas? Normally, ginger should be higher, and also the, the palaces. There is some kind of an adjustment, you know, we... We run the most iconic palaces and we don't want to fill them up only with wedding businesses. So, you know, it's it's a it's a trade-off we have to have. We rather go for high rate transient business. And um, we like to keep those palaces very iconic. They need always significant investments. So we are very pleased with the performance, but of course, with the inbound international travel expected to come back, which is not yet even to almost half of the level. That's a very important segment for us, for our Taj palaces, be it the Rambagh or the Lake Palace or, uh, you know, our palaces in Jodhpur or in Hyderabad. So, so I, I, I think um, they will benefit more with the international high paying, uh, transient and leisure customers start coming back in the numbers that we used to have pre-COVID level. Mr. Chatwal, I'm just going to break this question for the benefit of our viewers. I'll take the clock back. Let's say January 2022. Things started looking up. But the real uptick started coming from mid-2022. That's the time when occupancy rates also started moving higher. And that is the time when the operating leverage would kick in. Where do you see the occupancy rates, not the levels, occupancy rate moving for 2023? Because I'm sure by now, since you're speaking about... Uh, G20, Cricket World Cup, you know your order book, your occupancy rates, where it is headed. Could there be an uptick of operating leverage which would kick in in this calendar year? I am, uh, as always, uh, fairly optimistic that, uh, you know, the occupancies will go up further. And the reason being that the supply remains constrained and the demand is very strong. So if the supply is constrained, especially in big, big metros where there is always enough supply, like the Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai, Bangalore, 
uh, if there the demand is outpacing the supply, the occupancies go up. And if the occupancies goes up, automatically your ability to charge goes up. So then you get the, the impact on revenue for available room, which starts moving up. And you're absolutely right on the middle of uh, uh, 22 uh, that we started seeing the operating leverage kick in. But it would also be fair to say in the month of April and May last year, the, uh, the two key destinations that benefited a lot and is very, are very important for the hotel sector, and one of them is very important for our PNL, is the city of Mumbai, which had the IPL. And with that IPL, the occupancy levels that we saw in April uh, were phenomenal. So I think we started the year as a sector on a good note. bread in the butter, so to speak, for the hotel industry. Do you see business travel numbers to remain strong? And if I may put an additional, uh, you know, cheese on top of the bread is international travel. Do you see that normalizing also? So I'm talking about butter and cheese both for you. See, being in the hotel sector, Nikunj, I get to see a lot of butter and cheese <laughs> and, and everything else. Let me put it in a in a business language. You know, uh, one of the business schools used the terminology of wisdom of the crowds. So if I was to put the collective wisdom of the crowd and all the discussions that you had on your channel yesterday, it seems that the budget... Uh, is definitely 10 on 10. And I think one of the specialists even said it's 11 on 10. And I think given the focus on GDP growth and the infrastructure, and even we were mentioned as a sector, tourism being important one, and we have to see the fine print, but the whole thing about Dekho Apna Desh, 50 new destinations, I think this is going to help the sector not only to perform well, but order in in order to create new jobs, in order to create indirect jobs linked to the sector. I think it is in for a, a very strong and a, and a good uh, upswing. Good morning. This is Nantara here. Really enjoyed you having us on the budget think tank yesterday and getting your views. But staying with this theme, so things are only <coughs> going to get in better and the government is checking in with these kind of reforms for the hospitality sector. What is it going to mean for Indian hotels? You've stood out on the stock markets. Uh, uh, Aisha also pointed that out earlier. The profits that were declared in the quarter that's gone by are greater than any full year profit. So is that going to be the trend also going forward? In Q4, will you uh, beat this performance? No, Q3 is obviously the best quarter. I think it will still stay the best. If Q4 ends up being the second best, which it has always been, uh, with a very strong performance than our best Q4 ever, uh, we would be very pleased. But Nantara, there is a little bit more to it. It's not just the supply and demand. It's the work that we have done over the last several years. Our focus on balancing the asset light growth with the operating leverage in our own portfolio. It's our focus on launching new brands and uh, not only at hotels uh, and, you know, Rede redefining, reimagining our brandscape, but even within the hotels, let's say on the food and beverage, and you've been privy, you interviewed me for one in one of our uh, new FNB initiatives on Indian cuisine in the city of Delhi, but it's all over. Whether it's a microbrewery in the city of Bangalore, last weekend we opened one uh, in Goa, whether it's uh, bringing in an Italian concept uh, to India, um, uh, which we also opened in Goa, and Avan was there with me uh, on that one. Um, and also a lot of initiatives on the spa front, initiatives on the homestay, home delivery, QSR. I think we unleashed the potential of Indian hotels with the experience of all our associates, our management, uh, consistently over the last three years. And their relentless efforts in all these brands are yielding results some from a percentage perspective and our iconic Taj brand in terms of the absolute value that it drives. So, so I think, uh, well, you know, things keep changing at a macro level, geopolitical level, but what the management has been able to do is to walk the talk on the strategy that has been consistently communicated on our investors day, capital markets day, 
and the guidance we've given uh, in our uh, initiative on our one 2025. Mr. Chatwal, of all the several interaction you meet personally, had you remember interactions with Awan and with Nantara? You never quote your own interaction. He remembers the good no, no, yeah. because, <laughs> because, because your and my interaction, except for one, which was the rendezvous at Taj, were always on a more, you know, TV yeah. and digital mode with yeah. Awan and Nantara who stepped in, actually Nayantara stepped in for you in Delhi. It was supposed to be with you, so... <laughs> Good comeback, sir. Good comeback. Good comeback. I have Please one question. That. As a pure uh, customer, every time I go to Delhi, it's Dal Bukhara which is more inviting. It's an ITC hotel, ITC restaurant. When will that Dal of Taj become famous than Dal Bukhara of ITC? You know, we have uh, launched a wonderful dal, but it could never be compared to any other because traditionally the color of the dal in all these restaurants have been black. And we have launched something similar with the yellow dal in our uh, uh, Loya, which is the newly launched concept. So, and I think there is enough, you know, there is enough diversity in the nation. There is enough quality available. There's enough innovation available. I think we should just... Uh, not compare. It's like comparing children, comparing hotels within the sector. We should learn to appreciate the wonderful things that each of these brands and, and the sector per se has to offer, especially the sector coming from Asia and within Asia from India has done very well during COVID without cutting on the standards and actually going a notch higher uh, and making it far more competitive to its uh, competitors from the West. Okay, so let's see when that uh, yellow dal can beat the black dal bukhara of ITC. Uh, Nikun, I just want to tell you that maybe Puneet Chatwal also remembers that conversation with me a little more because his best friend happened to be my biology teacher in school. So we did uh, bond on that. And uh, Mr. Chatwal, I hope you're not going to get me into trouble by saying I was trying to, I was filling in for Nikun. You don't fill in for bosses. <laughs> the only problem is, Nantara, you just told everyone that how far we are apart in age. <laughs> yeah, I was actually thinking about that. So I'll, 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 I'll close this interaction today, Mr. Chatwal. You may not remember, but I remember all our lovely interactions. <laughs> Uh, but, but guys, <laughs> I'm the only one who contributed to his quarterly earnings. I stayed at your Ama Stays property in Kerala, which I'll talk about off the record with you. <laughs> and during during New Year's, so peak rates, Mr. Chatwal. Now we know about 35.5% margin. Yeah, I, I contributed to his earnings. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for all the support, for all the interactions and always being there. Thank you very much. Good luck, sir. Numbers have been super duper for Indian hotels. The stock almost at a new high, which you touched yesterday. By the way, today some little profit booking has kicked in.